The most serious human rights violations against female North Korean soldiers are sexual assault crimes. Based on my experience, I think almost 70% of female soldiers are victims of sexual assault or sexual harassment. And I'm also a victim of sexual assault. Even though a lot of time has passed, it is still difficult for me to recall the memories and to talk about them. It happened when I was 23, when I was close to being discharged. One day, a political advisor ordered me to his room. I knew immediately that it had come. You don't say th- anything to each other, but you instinctively know that when a political advisor orders you to come to his office, you know what he wants and what he will do to you. But if I refuse his request, I can't become a member of the Workers' Party of Korea. Depending on what he does with his pen, you may be admitted to the party or be rejected. I have endured six difficult years in the military. In North Korean culture, if I return to society without being able to join the party, I'm perceived as a problem child. And I'll be stigmatized for the rest of my life, which means you won't be able to get a good job and it will be a problem when you try to marry. What could I have chosen? The moment I reject him, all of the hardships I endured for six years and my future will all be blown away. I had no choice. So even though I knew, I had no choice but to comply with the demands of the political leaders. Ironically, he asked me when I last had my period. He was trying to calculate the ovulation cycle. After enlisting in the military, my body became so weak because I couldn't eat well, so I had my period about once every four to six months. In the end, I was sexually assaulted by him. After a while, I felt a weird change in my body. So I told a political advisor about my physical condition. A few days later, he said to me, go to the military medical office at 10 o'clock tonight. I went to the military medical office like he told me. A military surgeon was already waiting for me. He performed an abortion on me without anesthesia. The pain was truly... But the pain did not end there. It still haunts me today. Since then, I've escaped North Korea and I currently live in the U.S. But to me... All men are like that political advisor, and everything men do reminds me of what he did. Because of that experience, not only do I still struggle mentally, but I'm also not able to have children. So even now, it's difficult for me to have a good marriage. The shame I felt back then still haunts me and will continue to do so. Honestly, that was one of the more difficult things about my military service. Female North Korean soldiers are not properly supplied with even the most basic feminine hygiene products. I'm talking about things like sanitary pads, lotion, and undergarments. I could live without most things, but the lack of pads was the hardest. They gave us gauze instead of sanitary pads, and we had to wash and reuse them. They didn't even supply us with more gauze for several years, so it would tear and have holes. But you can't throw them away because that's all you have. There were times when I took the used gauze left by discharging senior officers. In my case, I used a total of four sanitary pads while serving in the military. Four is not enough. That's why female soldiers use foot wraps as a substitute for sanitary pads. Foot wraps are what soldiers use when they wear military boots. It is a thick rectangular piece of cloth used to wrap the foot. Socks are considered a luxury, so foot wraps are used in place of socks. But I use it as a sanitary pad. The thick and stiff fabric caused chafing, which in turn irritated the skin and caused more swelling. Every time I took a step, the pain was so bitter that I cried. 
At night, I wash the cloth. There is no soap, so I just washed it with water, which means you can't remove the blood stains. I slept with it under my pillow to keep it hidden. Male soldiers, such as company commanders or political advisors, entered the women's rooms without warning. It would be so embarrassing to show the cloth, but also I kept it under my pillow because there is no heating. I tried to dry it overnight with my body heat, even a little. But even if I slept on it, it didn't dry much. In the morning, it kind of felt drained of water, but that's about it. Still, I used a wet cloth the next day. My most horrible memory is using the wet foot wraps as sanitary pads in the cold winter. Cruel punishments occurred many times throughout the day, but back then I didn't know the punishments I received were considered cruel. It would be somewhat easier if I received a punishment for my own misbehavior. But the punishments are inflicted to the entire group if one person misbehaves or makes a mistake, and the punishments lasted all day. The punishments included running hundred laps around the field in full uniform, standing outside for an hour only in underwear, in the cold winter, and other vicious punishments. The most difficult punishment to bear was to put my hands in freezing water in the cold winter. And then to hang on an iron bar as soon as I took them out. North Korea is extremely cold. The moment I put my wet hands on the iron bar, my hands froze onto the bar. When I tried to remove my hands, the flesh was torn off. I can still feel the pain from thinking about it. I have very few memories of being full while serving in the military. Corn is served as the main meal, and if you pack it tight onto a spoon, you get about three to four spoonfuls. I counted each grain of corn while eating so I could make it last longer. It was depressing to see it disappear so fast while eating. The most memorable and the tastiest thing I ate during my military service was raw corn. I didn't even cook it. One evening, after a day's hard training, I laid down for the night, but I couldn't fall asleep because I only had three or four spoonfuls of corn. I turned to look at a friend who was lying next to me. She also had a hard time sleeping. So we decided to go out to steal food. We took our backpacks. As women, we were too scared to steal food from a private house. Since we didn't have the courage to do that, we decided to go to a cornfield. We walked for about an hour to get there. However, once we got to the field, we were too scared to go in. Because during fall season, the cornfields and rice paddy fields were heavily guarded. The cornfield we were at was guarded by soldiers with loaded firearms. We were so scared, but we couldn't go back. We had walked over an hour to get to the field, and we didn't have the strength to walk back. We mustered up the courage and entered the cornfield. I broke off one ear of corn. It was a quiet night, and I thought the sound of the corn breaking could be heard on the other side of the field. Immediately, we ran to the nearest ditch and hid. We didn't even grab the corn we broke off. We peeked out to see if anybody was chasing after us. We were very scared. Then we sat down again and came up with a plan. If we're caught while plucking the corn, we may be shot to death. So let's have one of us subdue the guards. Then the other person should pick corn. But how could two unarmed women subdue men who are fully armed? At this point, my friend said, "I will subdue them at their sentry box. So in the meantime, pick corn and put it in your backpack." With no time to think about it, we put our plan into action. 
My friend held up several ears of corn and made them look like an automatic rifle. It's so dark outside that you can only make out the silhouette, so you can't tell if it's a real rifle or if they're just corn. She walked to the sentry box. As I walked to pick corn, I thought this must be what I would feel in a real battlefield. I was afraid, but I had no intention of going back. I felt like I would die from hunger if I didn't eat something soon. When I got close to the sentry box, I felt like a valiant soldier on the battlefield. The fear subsided, and the countless lessons I had on the need to subdue the enemy at all cost took over me. Just for a few years of corn, I felt overwhelmed with this kind of military spirit, and I yelled at the top of my lungs, "Don't move!" If I see even a head peek out, I will shoot. I pointed the cornstalk I was holding towards the sentry box, like a rifle. Then I heard a sound from inside. I yelled again, "If you move, I will shoot mercilessly." I felt like a commander in battle, and I hurriedly packed corn in my backpack. A few minutes later, we safely returned to the base with our backpacks filled with corn. On the way back, we sat on the road and ate raw corn. It couldn't be any sweeter. There are plenty of delicious foods around me now, but nothing tastes as good as the raw corn I had then. It was the sweetest and the most delicious food I've ever had in my life.